What is up guys? Welcome back to another team builder this time for week two of the UPA. This week we are up against Nick and the uh, Why Not Why Nots. This guy's got a pretty cool team. Um, it's, uh, it's actually quite bulky uh, and it takes on my team rather well, but I think we've come up with a decent game plan uh, for him. So we'll get right into it. You'll see uh, our team come up on your screen here. Mix of Entei, Magnazone, which we just freshly picked up. Latias, Seismitoad, Stoutlin, and Mega Slowbro. You'll see his team come up on your right, which is made up of Scizor, regular Scizor, Florges, Tentacruel, Pangoro, Licky Licky, Stunfisk, Glalie, Skarmory, Delphox, Masquerain, Salamence, and Alakazam. I don't think I mentioned that the Glalie is a Mega, which makes it a lot more of a threat, so definitely an important Pokemon to keep in mind. Now, let's just get right into it here. My game plan for this week is to win with Entei. No questions asked. When Entei is my win condition no matter what. Basically, I have to make sure that his Glalie doesn't get up in his Mega Evolution, and I gotta just go ham with Entei. It does so much damage to so many things on his team, so... Uh, and the only thing that his Pokemon that resist my fire moves have to hit me back, except for Tentacruel, uh, is ground moves, uh, such as um, Salamence's Earthquake. For example so this week we're actually running four berries on the team total which is quite a lot but i think it's going to work out we're running shook berry on Entei and uh sacred fire will-o-wisp extreme speed and stone edge and you'll see here our ev spread is 56 in hp 252 attack adamant uh four in defense so that we could have an odd number hp and then 196 in speed just enough to outspeed his mega glalie before mega evolution that's why i said that we had to get it in beforehand he doesn't have a lot of things on his team that are very fast the fastest pokemon in his team being of course alakazam followed by delphox and then salamence so really really slow team but it's really bulky and it's hard to take down. And sorry, his Tentacruel can also be very speedy, by, but I fully expect it to be defensive this week just to take on Entei. So we've got a game plan for that. Uh, you guys will see in a bit. But Shookaberry really helps out with the Stunfisk. I'll just tell you guys right away, Stunfisk is terrifying this match. Uh, <laughs> no joke, this thing can actually wall a lot of my team. And it can do a very good job of countering a couple of Pokemon that I have. So... You might be asking, well, why don't you just bring the Chestnut? Well, if you look at his team, he has a Florges, a Tentacruel, a Mega Glalie, Delphox, Alakazam, Salamence, Masquerain, and Skarmory. I cannot bring Chestnut at all. Like, all of those things just destroy it. So, definitely cannot bring Chestnut. The team I'm expecting him to bring, maybe this guy's will... Maybe this will give you guys a better idea of my thought process, is... Either Scizor or the Skarmory, one or the other, not, not both. I really don't expect both to come. Florges, Tentacruel, Pangoro, Stunfisk, Delphox, and either Mega Glalie or Salamence. And the reason I say this is because his Scizor counters my Weavile pretty nicely, unless I'm packing Wattmel Berry uh, Natural Gift, which I can't do anyway because it can just run bullet punch so that doesn't really work uh then the floor just also takes care of weavile up pretty well and it also counters latias so i expect him to bring that tentacruel specifically for the entei because if it's full uh, fizz death it can definitely take a hit it risks getting getting burned but it still walls me pretty well then in the pangoro is just a monster if he decides to bring adamant choice band on this thing i cannot switch into it with anything on my team it's going to be extremely difficult to uh, I, I just have to let it revenge kill me, basically, every time it comes in, so... Uh, then we have the Stunfisk, which completely shuts down Magnazone, unfortunately. But as you guys will see, that I have a little bit of a plan for that. Then we have, um... The Skarmory can come as well, because it's a pretty good Weavile check, and it also gets up rocks. Uh, then the Delphox runs the same coverage as the Siglyph that we ran into last week. It can run Energy Ball, Shadow Ball, uh, Fire Blast, and Psychic, so it can pretty much hit our entire team. Uh, and then the Masquerade I don't expect to come. The Salamence could come because it could be uh, just a Choice Scarf uh, Outrage variant if he thinks that I'm not going to bring the Blade for whatever reason, which I'm not. Uh, he can just Outrage my entire team. Slowbro's there to take care of it, unless he's a special set, in which, in which case we're going to have a little bit of a harder time switching into it. But a special set is a little less scary as well. Uh, and then finally, there's the Alakazam, which I also have... 
Well, I don't really have a plan for per se, but I have a Pokemon that can deal with it pretty well and can actually uh, break a sash. So let's just get into our next Pokemon right here. Our next Pokemon rock rocking a berry is going to be our Magnezone, which is also running the Shooka Berry. And we've got Sturdy. Now, you might be asking yourself, why not Magnet Pull? Because if he brings one of his Steel types, one, I expect his Scizor to be Choice Scarf to be able to outspeed my Magnezone if he does bring it. Or his Skarmory is going to be Shed Shell. So he's going to be able to switch out anyway, go into his Stunfisk and shut me down. So I'm just going to run Sturdy instead. And the reason being that once my Shooka Berry is broken, I can Wish Pass with Latias. <coughs> Excuse me. He'll back up my Magnezone to full, depending on what's in against my Latias, and get my Sturdy right back. And then I can fire off big hits once again. We're running 252 Modest, 240 Speed. Uh, as this is enough to outspeed a certain Pokemon on his team. Hold on a second. I think this is actually supposed to be uh, 216, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I think it's supposed to be 216. So let me just get rid of two here. Put this at 244. And yeah, that was because of the HP fire that it went down. This is supposed to be 216 because this... Um, this takes, I'm gonna put it in Spadef because of, uh, the Stunfisk, but this outspeeds Pangoro if he's not Choice Scarfed. If he's Adamant Choice Ban, I outspeed him, so we can deal with it this way. Uh, we have another Pokemon to deal with it pretty well, but this is, uh, pretty much our... I'm gonna try to basically fake him out with this thing and make him think that I'm Choice Locked. I'm going to try to catch a, a Scizor on a Switch in. If he stays in and goes for a, a Choice Scarfed Superpower... Sturdy will allow me to live, and I can fire back an HP fire and knock out his Scizor, which makes Stoutlin a lot more of a problem for him. It makes Slowbro harder to handle without the Pangoro being at full. Uh, so it's just, it, Latias is also difficult to kill at that point. So that's why we're running that. And then we have Miracoat here. This is for the Stunfisk. If he should decide to... Um, to get up, let's say I go for a Flash Cannon, predicting him to switch out of Scizor because he's Shed Shell. And I hit the Stunfisk for not a lot of damage. And then on the next turn, I click Flash Cannon again as he gets up rocks or tries to go for a Toxic. Then he realizes that I'm probably not going to switch out anyway. Clicks Earth Power, and then I hit him up with the Mirror Coat, knock out his Stunfisk, which makes Entei's job a lot easier, makes Slowbro's job a lot easier. Uh, Seismitoad as well, because it can just get toxic. I can Earthquake him back, but as you guys will see, we're running a little more of a physical set this week with Seismitoad. But this is, uh, this is our Magnezone set. I'm really hoping that it can do good things. This is also our go-to answer for Florgis. We can switch in at any time on it. Uh, even if it's packing HP Fire, it's not going to do too, too much. And then we'll be, we can fire back with a modest uh, 252 Flash Cannon and do a lot of damage back. So that's, uh, that's our Magnezone. Our next Pokemon is Latias, and I'm <laughs> really excited to use this set. We're running Culverberry, Draco Meteor, Sunny Day, Defog, and Wish. Now, Draco Meteor is specifically so that I can actually hit the Pangoro. Uh, it's the hardest move that I can hit it with, and I don't want to be in a one-on-one -on -one matchup against it and not be able to do anything back. So, I want to pack Draco Meteor on there, and it also hits his team pretty hard. So, it's, it's a pretty good thing to bring. If his uh, Salamence is not Choice Scarf, we can also outspeed it with our speed investment, as you guys will see here in a bit. Uh, this also, this speed is to outspeed um, Timid Choice Specs or Timid Life Orb, and basically Timid Max Speed uh, Delphox. It uh, outspeeds it by one point, so we didn't need to run Max Speed this week. We're running 104 in HP and then 196 in Special Attack. This investment in my HP allows me to take a Choice Banded Adamant knockoff with the Cobra Berry from Pangoro, hit it back with a Draco Meteor, and if he's not Choice Scarf, on the following turn I can get up a Sunny Day or threaten him out with the Draco Meteor again. He would be forced to switch, I would go for Sunny Day, and then I can switch into either my Magnezone or my Entei should he decide to switch into a Resist uh, for... Draco Meteor, such as Florges or um, or Scizor. So that's pretty much the game plan. Sunny Day is going to be is basically going to turn Entei into a nuke, going to ch change it back into a Choice Banded Mon because we're not running Choice Band, and Sacred Fire is going to do a ton to everything. I didn't mention we're packing Will O Wisp on here uh, because I fully expect his Tentacruel to be the switch into this thing, and if I, if I can burn that thing early on, that would be amazing. 
Our uh, other moves are Extreme Speed, because this can clean up the game, and Stone Edge to be able to hit the Salamence and the Delphox. It's the only move that hits both. I could have run Bulldoze to hit the... Um, to hit the Tentacruel, but I calc it up and Sacred Fire in the Sun does about the same, and if he's burned, it comes out to the same amount of damage anyway. Uh, we're also rocking Sunny Day so that his Scalds on Entei won't do as much. And they'll do about like 24% from his Tentacruel if it's not invested in Special Attack, so... Really cool set. Of course, we're rocking Defog to be able to support our uh, our Entei right here. I actually didn't nickname these guys again. I'll have to do that in a second, but I'll pause it right before we keep going. But uh, we're also uh, rocking the Wish because we can Wish Pass into a lot of different things. The things that threaten Latias, uh, being Scizor and uh, Florges specifically, those two things, Pangoro, I can switch into those. Uh, after uh, I get up a wish because I'll be able to heal up either my Slowbro or my Magnazone or so on my Stoutland to get it back up to full that's going to be very important but uh, moving on to the next Pokemon I'm just going to pause it until we do and uh, I'm going to put the nicknames on here just so you guys can see them all right so we got our nicknames on and um, as you can see we nicknamed our Magnazone claustrophobia because it can trap things so it's, uh, <laughs> it's a funny nickname uh, Clara, Johnson, Mika, and Drasil are coming this week, so let's move on. The next Pokemon on the list is our Seismitoad, and once again, running a berry. So, like I said, we have four berries on the team. This time, it's going to be a Rindo berry to be able to take grass moves. Now, with this EV spread, 248 HP, 28 defense, 60 special defense, and 172 adamant, I can take any hit from any Pokemon on his team literally any hit except for except for choice banded adamant hammer arm from pangoro and the other move is it's not choice specs energy ball because i can take that i can take a choice specs energy ball from uh from del fox even modest um i can live it it, it does like 92 percent and the other move was Hold on, let me just look at his look back at his team guys real quick. The other move was oh right, yeah. Freeze dry from Mega Glalie. I can do a lot of damage. So again, I don't expect him to bring the Mega Glalie just because it has a not so great matchup against some of the members on my team, especially Entei. Uh, should I run Shookaberry, which I am, because the only thing he has to hit me super effective is the uh, Earthquake, so we'll be able to knock him back out. And uh, basically, this thing is going to be extremely important because one, it deals with his uh, Stunfisk extremely well. He can only hit me with Earth Power or Toxic me. I can knock him back out with Earthquake. I think it's a two-hit KO. Toxic is going to be extremely important as well, as I can get that off on the Florges, potentially on the Licky Licky, should he decide to bring it. We can also get a Toxic off on the uh, the Mega Glalie before it comes in, the Stun Fisk, the, uh, the Mass Grain, the Salamence, anything really. And uh, Earthquake hits a bunch of things on his team, being Tentacruel, Stun Fisk, Delphox, and what else did it hit pretty hard? Well, it does about 40% to uh, to floor just It's actually a pretty strong move. Should he not run any Fizz Def, it's going to do a lot more. But this is our uh, this is our Seismitoad. Like I said, we can take Energy Ball from Alakazam. We can take it from Delphox. We can take it from anything. And the Earthquake's power right here, the 172 attack, is enough to uh, knock the Delphox and the Alakazam out after they hit me. So... It's just enough attack. It does like 99.6, I think, min to Alakazam with this investment. So that's uh, that's our Seismitoad set. As you can see, we're also running rocks because getting rocks in this game is going to be extremely important for the Glalie, for the Salamence, the Masquerade, the Delphox, breaking the Skarmory sturdy, getting chip damage on the Scizor should he choose to run Bandit or Scarfed or any non-leftovers item. Also good for getting chip damage on the Tentacruel and the Florges. So rocks are going to be extremely important. Going to have to get them up at some point. And uh, we can even lead with this thing and just get, go for Stealth Rocks because, like I said, there are only two moves on his team that he can run that would be able to knock me out on the first turn. Then we have our Stoutlin, Micah, running Fire Fang, Return, Superpower, and Pursuit. Now, Pursuit is going to be extremely important because if I bring Stoutlin in on, let's say, his uh, Alakazam after it gets a kill, it's kind of obvious that I'm running Choice Scarf at that point, and he's going to want to switch out to conserve his Sash, but he's not going to be able to because I'm going to be able to Pursuit him. Same goes for the Delphox, and other things like Tentacruel, like Stunfisk if he doesn't want it to take more damage, so on. 
Fire Fang is there for Scizor and Skarmory, if you have, if you couldn't figure that out by now. It can also hit Mask Rain for super effective damage, so it's there for that. Return hits a little bit harder, but, you know, it's uh, it's always nice to have another coverage move. Uh, return is just for raw power. Should he choose not to bring either of his Steel types, fearing my Magnazone or my Entei or both. So, Return will be able to hit his team relatively hard, actually. I think it takes off, like, 35% from Florges, which is nothing to laugh at. Uh, we are adamant, as you can see, 252. The 212 speed gives me just enough speed to outspeed his Alakazam, uh, if he doesn't run it Scarfed, of course. So, it's faster than anything on his team, basically. And, uh, yeah, and then we're running Pursuit, of course, like I said. Superpower is there to hit the Pangoro for super effective damage, as well as the Glalie. So, if I can just keep them in and knock them out, that would be great, because they're both threats. To, uh, to a lot of my team, so Stoutland's there for that. Of course, we're rocking the Intimidate, which is good because then I can come in on a Pangoro that's choice locked, and his knockoff does like 25% after an Intimidate, which is which is nothing. This thing has a lot of bulk, actually. 321, 217, 216. This is like average OEU bulk for a Pokemon. Like, I would say like maybe 90 HP would be better, but it's, it's relatively bulky, so really great on Stoutland. And then finally, I contemplated bringing this Pokemon or not. Um, I decided to go with Mega Slowbro because I already had a pretty good matchup against the rest of his team, but I wanted something that could switch into Pangoro's choice locked fighting moves. And Latias is not a Pokemon that can do that. Let me just tell you right away, it does not appreciate them at all. So I decided to bring uh, Slowbro instead. Slowbro actually also has a very good matchup against his entire team. If you see that, you can see that if I get a Calm Mind up, with this thing, he basically can't beat me. A choice banded U-turn slash bug bite uh, from Scizor does like 50% at most, and I can burn it back with a Scald. I can always wish, th what's great is that I can also wish this thing back up after it's Mega Evolved, but I can use it as a pivot to get Regenerator throughout the game. So then of course, uh, Psy Shock destroys Florges' life, uh, it destroys Tentacruel as well. Pangoro's not going to appreciate a Scald. Uh, Mega Slowbro can take a Choice Bandit Adamant knockoff if it's Mega Evolved. If it's not Mega Evolved, it takes like 60 to 70%. It's it's a lot of damage. Uh, Licky Licky is also not going to appreciate getting burned. Stunfisk just gets knocked out. Um, after a Calm Mind, I believe, with Scald. Then, uh, if he's not running Special Defense, of course, Glalie. Uh, Glalie can hit me for super effective damage with the Freeze Dry, which is another reason I'm worried about it coming. But, uh, again, I still have my Stoutland, I have my Magnazone for it, so it's not a problem. Uh, then we have the uh, Skarmory, uh, which would go down. The Delphox, which can only do so much damage back to me if I have a Calm Mind up. Same thing with the Alakazam. The Salamence, if it's not running special, then it can only hit me so hard. And if it is running special, then with a, with a Calm Mind up, it won't be able to do anything. So if I get a Calm Mind up on... Uh, I need to pick my, my battles, and it will probably be... I would say against the Tentacruel, because the hardest thing he can hit me back with is Sludge Wave, and I'm fully expecting him to pack Sludge Wave if he brings the Tentacruel and not Sludge Bomb, because I do have the uh, Chestnut that I could potentially bring, which would completely wall the Tentacruel at that point. So if he's rocking Sludge Wave, then he only has a 10% chance to poison me. I can heal off the damage, get up some Calm Mines, and then Psy Shock him to Oblivion. So that's why Slowbro's here, and it's also just a really good pivot because of the Regenerator, so I'm, I'm not forced to Mega Evolve if I don't stay in obviously because I can't so that's what Slowbro is there for pretty much I think we have a decent game plan we have a lot more originality this week than we did last week I feel like we were running really really standard sets that were easily countered by the stuff that my opponent brought uh, kudos to Swampy he did a great job planning uh, his his plays were a little bit weird sometimes I did watch his side of the battle but uh, I mean he came out on top so who am I to speak right so that's pretty much it for the team builder this week, guys. Uh, watch the battle tomorrow if you're interested to know how it went. I'm actually having a battle in, a, in about an hour from now, maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, about 30 minutes from now, actually. So uh, really, really soon. Hopefully it all goes well. I'm going to be re re recording that uh, as well, of course. You can check that out tomorrow. Subscribe if you want to get that in your sub box. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed this team builder. Leave a comment for me if you want to see me use any kind of funky set this season. Uh, if you're, if you're from the UPA and you're watching this and you want to leave a comment, don't leave something just dumb. Just <laughs> give me, like, a really cool, uh, weird set that I could use against somebody. So, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.